like I'm shining with the glory of the sun. Flirting suspended above the city where I'm from. Feels like I'm drifting on a tidal wave of love. I was wasted, I was washed out. Now I've been lifted up. These houses look so fake because they're so cute. <laughs> like they look like little Christmas villages. Ugh. So this is the police station, I guess. This is pretty much as dark as it gets but it does get really foggy by the mountains and there's like this really calming eerie feeling that I love I don't know, there's something really exciting about being outside when everyone else is asleep and I think it's the fact, it almost like feels like when you're on a road trip or something like that and you're at like a, a service stop at like 3 a.m. to get gas and you like go inside and you get like candy, you know? Like that exciting sort of anything could happen. I don't really want to walk up to the mountains or anything right now because it was raining last night and I know I would slip and fall. So I'm gonna go down to the art studios.
the light here at night is very much like um, the movie The Virgin Suicides when she wakes up really early in the morning and she fell asleep on the football field and she finds out that the her boyfriend or whatever left her there. It's kind of like that, you know. Ooh, there's also this really fun tram outside trampoline. Sometimes during the day, like, kids are on it. Um, so if it's free, I might go on it. <laughs> it's a really small village. And obviously, like, the scenery is beautiful. You can do a lot of hiking. But the main event is, like, the art residency. And there's literally, like, everything you could want to do here. Like, ceramics and printmaking and a wood shop and a metal shop. Here's the building right here. Um, I like to, in the mornings, walk along that road here and I sing to the birds, like the birds will actually sing back to you. And I'm looking for sheep sometimes. Now let's get up there. Yeah, let's go into the factory. So basically there's a ton of different workshops and then one big open studio space. So you can see people have been working on like paintings and she does like screen printing and stuff. But yeah, let's go to the concert hall and make some music. I'm excited. Ugh, I just love being out at night. You do your eyes like Sometimes it seems like you won't survive this. Just look how sick this setup is. It's like a little restaurant with like a stage and everything. sort of like meant to be for me to focus on music more because I do make music but I've been wanting to like start playing like electric guitar and things like that um but this is like the craziest thing wait you guys so if you're like a synth geek this is the craziest synth organ ever and it's like super rare but I've been playing with it and it's just like so freaking cool <laughs>
hands on something. Ah! What did I do? What did I do? It's too slow now. I don't know what any of these buttons mean. Shit. Fuck. I don't remember. I don't remember. And I was having so much fun. Yeah, so upstairs there's like this really cozy kitchen area, like hangout area. Um, and there's like records and like extra guitars and things. Should we put on a record? Okay, whichever record I land on, the cover is how the rest of your year is gonna go. Okay. Savannah, the very, oh no, Santana, the very best. All right, good for you. Black magic woman. All right, I'm walking home now. Honestly, that organ is so addicting. I would honestly do like a residency or like a long-term one just so I could play that. Because like, an uh, instrument like that is so rare. Like, it's so heavy, like you couldn't even, it's not, it's like from the 60s or something, it has to be. But gosh, I have so much joy playing that, like so much more than, the type that you like connect to the computer, it just feels so much more like hands on. Anyway, I, I would have stayed there all night, but anyway, it's late. Anyway, I should go home, but I'll see you guys later. Let's go to the corner store and buy some fruit. I would do anything to get you out your room. Just take your medicine. And eat some food. I noticed that a lot of the performance are centered around the mountains. The mountains were present a lot as scenery, as a part of the pieces themselves. And it made me think about a lot the environment in which we grow up in and how maybe that environment can be oppressive or comforting. And yeah, I also got to see some poetry. And even though I couldn't understand Icelandic, I thought it was beautiful to listen to. Í gær í sáununi þar var ekkert ilva. Engin föt bara við öll saman og náttúra. Good morning. I'm in the ceramic studio right now. There's a lot of light in the studio and um, some people from the other house have COVID so trying to be careful and so I'm working in the ceramic studio today even though I'm not doing ceramics I'm just working in here but it's so beautiful like oh my gosh so yesterday there was this big performance and musical festival called Lunga in a village next door I guess like not next door like an hour drive away so we decided to go there and it was a lot of performing arts um, and I was very inspired to see like the youth culture in Iceland like I'm not kidding you guys when I say I have never seen so many fucking stylish people in my life like Everyone looks like a top model. Everyone is gorgeous um, But that's not why I was inspired obviously I think it's so cool and also like I find that um, I've remarked in Iceland that the women are like very strong and very just like in their style and everything very bold and like bad bitch energy is just what i'm gonna say but yeah anyway we got to see some performing art and i love performance art i think it's my favorite and it's what i'm really working more in lately because i think that performing arts is one of the most vulnerable um, mediums that you can work in and i love that you're using something you already have your body and it's just something that you can really engage with other people so got to see some performing arts and some poetry which was really cool and also this little village was so cute i'll put the name of it down here but yeah i feel like i've just had so much time since i've been here just to be out in nature and also just reflect upon my life back in paris um i feel like I lived in Paris for almost 10 years, you know, and I feel like it became such a part of my identity living there and who I was and how I had evolved in 
to like the artist that I was in like a very linear way. So sort of separating myself from that and seeing like all of the possibilities, picking up instruments here that I never really thought that I would play. Like for example, the electric guitar. This is something that I've always really wanted to start doing, but I, I didn't really have it as a part of my identity back in Paris. Like there, I did a lot of things, but like getting on stage and playing the electric guitar wasn't one of them. And so, but it has been something that I've been thinking about lately is expanding the way I create musically and just in every possible way, shedding the ego and really just allowing myself to follow what feels good. And this reminds me of a quote that I wrote in my journal the other day, and it's really been guiding me a lot while I've been here and I wanna share it with you. When it comes to making art, think delight, think fun. Do not think duty. Do not do what you should do. Do what intrigues you, explore what interests you. Think mystery, not mastery. <laughs> Bitch, think mystery, not mastery. I think so often in life we get so attached to our egos and what the story of us before tells about who we are presently. For example, you know, if you were to write like a story about who I am on paper, you'd be like, okay, she's a YouTuber, she's a multimedia artist, she lives in Paris, but she's an American. And so there's all of these ways that people want to place us in boxes and we've sort of mastered in a way that identity and it's comfortable to us how we're existing in the world in that way but really being here what i have been drawn to are all of the different mysterious mediums to me for example like what would my life be like if i allowed myself to play like the electric guitar and be that bitch that plays the electric guitar or like what would my life be like if i decided that i wanted to move far away and i don't know become like a cabaret singer i don't know like i'm just making things up in my head but i think that if we allow ourselves to let go of being masters over whatever we're doing in our lives and this is something that's really interesting to observe in other people as well. Um, for example, when you meet other artists, I think that we have been taught to make ourselves very sellable and in a certain package of how to be so that people understand who we are. But if you tell yourself, like, bitch, like next time somebody says, like, Shayna, what do you do? I'm gonna be like, I'm a drug dealer. <laughs> I'm an Icelandic drug dealer, man. Um, no, I'm just kidding. I don't do drugs. Yeah, and I've also had a lot of thoughts since I've been here about um, why I am the way that I am. People often think that you are, if you are an introvert, it means that you don't like talking to other people, which is completely false. Being an introvert means that you get your power from spending time alone and introspection. Being an extrovert means that you get your power from when you're conversing with other people and being around their energy and so you get power from soaking up other people's energies and so i was thinking about like you know a lot of people in my life always see me as somebody very outgoing and they're always like how are you not afraid to like get on stage or like put yourself out there you don't give a fuck and i think it's because i realized that the only opinion that really matters about me is myself and i get my power from being alone so i don't really need the approval of other people so when I do, you know, get on stage or when I do, you know, make a video or whatever, um, I'm coming at it with this energy of like, I already have the power that I need. And so I don't really give a fuck because I think a lot of times in life, you know, if you're an introvert, you see that as a handicap. You see that as, oh, like I naturally like to be myself. So when I'm around other people, I have to overcompensate. When in reality, you don't. When you're around other people or when you want to perform or put yourself out there in a way, remember that you're so fucking powerful because you get your power from you. So any interaction you have with other people is just like play. It's just like fun, you know, like get on stage, make a fool of yourself, do whatever, because really you don't give a shit what anyone thinks of you because your power comes from your opinion of you. Do you know what I'm saying? Do you know what I'm saying? This is something that I thought about while I was journaling um, the other day in the mountains, <laughs> looking for the lambs. 
I'm a cold-blooded animal. You know what I mean? I self-regulate my blood from the inside and not my environment. You know what I mean? Anyway, gosh, 10 minutes, girl. This is gonna be the longest video ever. But anyway, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I can like update you guys about life and in Iceland. I think it's just any time that you go somebody, somewhere else, take yourself out of an environment, you're able to be re-energized. Um, and also being in a residency like this one, you're also able to create while you're here, connect to other artists, but also it's less expensive um, than going on vacation or things like this. Like you're able to explore the world, but also keep up like a working practice. And it's just been really interesting to see like other ways of life and other the other things are possible because I think oftentimes when we get stuck in this mentality of like our day-to-day -day life. So yeah, I don't know. I just want to give you guys some things to think about in your own life. Um, remember how fucking powerful you are. Remember that you self-regulate. You don't have to be afraid of what other people think about you because you're the one that decides. Like this is, when you're talking to other people and when you're having conversations and when you're sharing your art, it's all just like a fun game. Do you know what I mean? And if you look at life that way, then you won't take it too seriously, other people's opinions of you too seriously or anything. Every day, if you can take a step towards taking up more space, whether that's on social media and you wanna share more. You know who is like one of my biggest inspirations when it comes to Instagram posts? It's Britney Spears because when she writes, even though it's like stream of consciousness, there's something like very transparent about it that I think is really cool. And it seems like she like lets go of her ego, you know, and whatever you can say, whatever about her, but she's fucking taking up space in a really cool way. So anyway, <laughs> if you guys made it to the end, leave me a comment that says we love magic. I'm just really grateful to be a part of your journey, a part of your lives. And if it, you know, like what I've learned can help you in some way, I'm so grateful. So if you guys want more content, um, you can subscribe to my Patreon. I have podcast episodes, we do Zoom parties. If you want to support what I'm doing, I have a poetry book out. Um, I'm getting ready to launch my second book very soon. And I have art prints, etc. So that would mean a lot to me if you guys want to support what I'm doing. Um, but if not, I will see you in the next episode of the Iceland Diaries, baby. Okay, bye.